In this episode of my Chevy Astro Adventure Van Build Series, I'll be installing solar panels and a lithium battery. First, I'm going to install this 100 amp hour lithium battery. Instead of going with a brand name battery like Battleborn for a thousand bucks, I bought this Amphrey Hour battery for 500. To secure it, I'm screwing down blocks of wood around its base as well as using a ratcheting strap over the top of it. This battery won't be moving around at all. Next, I'll start solar panel installation. I have these two 100 watt Renogy solar panels. And we'll be making my own mounting system with aluminum tubing. This tubing comes from a company called EZ Tube, and the plastic connectors make it very easy to just cut the tubes to the size you need quickly assemble a frame around the solar panels for mounting. So here's a list of the parts I ordered. With a hacksaw, I'll be cutting the tubing down to the right size. Next, I'll file down the edges of the cut so the plastic inserts go in smoothly. I'll admit, this is a fairly elaborate mounting system for the solar panels. The standard options just didn't seem to stand out to me though as a good option. Most of the existing mounting brackets are meant for flat surfaces, not the curved roof of a van. Plus, I like the idea of having both of my panels mounted together so they could be removed as one unit. So now I've built my frame around the solar panels. The next step will be to fasten the solar panels to the frame. And to mount the solar panels to the frame, I'll be using these sheet metal screws. Okay, so just, uh, if you could just kind of hold, hold those in place so that, that way this and this are flush. We use a block of wood here to keep the frame and the plastic panels flush with each other while going around the perimeter and screwing down the panels. Next, I'll mount the solar panels and the frame to the van itself. Yeah, looks like it. I'm left to do but drill us some holes. It's like steaming. There's air coming out of the pipe. Well, th this came loose and was the bit was spinning. But then there was like literally air just hissing out of that pipe. Did you did you hear it? No. It was just going. Shh, and I was like, what the? <laughs> That's bizarre. Yeah. The plan to mount these solar panels is pretty unorthodox, but I think it will be just as strong, if not stronger, than oh, any out of the box solar panel mounting solutions currently on the market. Yes, sir. Only. No, that'll work. So going up to here. Yeah, this is going to work perfectly. It's going to work. So I'm using hinges to mount one end of the solar panels to the roof rack. The hinges give me a way to flip the panels up in order to screw them in, 
It also allows the angles of the panels to be adjustable if needed. It's so much faster. I'll be using Loctite thread sealant on the nuts behind these bolts to make sure they don't come off. Doing it by hands for suckers. Seriously. Now, I'll need a way to attach the hinges to this solar panel frame. And if you've never used rivet nuts before, let me tell you, they are awesome. You drill a hole, they go in with a tool similar to a rivet gun, and leave you with a female thread that you can use to screw a bolt into. Next, I'll run my cables for the solar panels through the roof. This product allows me to do this in a waterproof manner. Here, I drill the holes to run 10 gauge solar panel wire through. I'll install some rubber grommets to protect the solar panel wire from the sharp edges of the holes I just drilled. And now, I'll route my cables down through the hole to reach my power center, where these will connect to my DC to DC charger in the next episode. To attach this wire entry thing to the roof, I'll use 3M VHB tape. VHB stands for very high bond, which basically means it has a lot of holding power for an adhesive tape. And finally, I'll lay down a thick bead of Sikaflex 715 around the top for a waterproof sealant. Now, it's time to mount the solar panels to the roof. I'm just testing the fit now but ultimately, I'll be using Loctite thread sealant here on these screws as well, so they don't wiggle Something loose over fall. time. <laughs> these line up good over here. Uh -oh. Maybe I'll get these in first and just kind of see how they're at. The solar panels have been mounted to the hinges on the roof rack. Now, I need to come up with a way to secure the front of the panels to the roof itself. I think I'll make some brackets out of sheet metal and use some strong adhesive tapes to mount them. I know it sounds crazy, but I think it will work. And now I'm cutting this plate of steel down to roughly four inches by eight inches. Unfortunately, my metal cutting blade is having a hard time cutting this steel getting nowhere with the chop saw, so it's time to try something new. First, the jigsaw with the metal blade. This is also not working. Next, I'll try the angle grinder. This is working much better. Within a minute, I've made my cut. It's all about finding the right tool for the job. Now, I just need to cut one more of these. With my plates cut, I pull out a piece of angle aluminum and try to piece my idea together. The angle aluminum will get screwed to the frame and then the steel plate gets taped down to the roof uh, this will utilize a large surface area, which should give me a lot of holding power. I'll drill some holes through both the bracket and the plate. I'll use a countersink bit for the holes under the plate so the screw heads fit flush. Next, I'll bolt the angle aluminum to the plate. After cleaning the surface with rubbing alcohol, I'll add two pieces of VHB tape on the bottom of the plate. Here's a look at the bracket and where I might place it. And you can see the bracket sits at a slight angle compared to the frame. Using my vise, I'll bend the aluminum slightly to achieve the angle I need. A small change, but now it's fitting much better. Next, I'll glue down a few pieces of rubber below the center of the solar panels to act as a support. This is so it doesn't sag over time. 
Now, I'll drill a few holes and add some rivet nuts. I'll just widen these holes to match the size of my bolts. And now it's time to screw down the bracket to the frame. Before I tape down the brackets for the solar panels, I'll make all of the electrical connections to the solar panels now. I'm using inline fuses for the panels for extra protection. Yep. And before I tape down these brackets, I'm going to thoroughly clean the roof. Here's one last look at the brackets before they get sealed down. And between the strips of VHB tape, I'm using Loctite PL Max construction adhesive for another type of bond and to add overall strength. And now's the time to set these brackets down on the roof let these adhesives do their job. These boards will ensure constant pressure on the brackets while they dry to create the strongest possible bond. Now that the construction adhesive is dried, I'll add a few more layers of VHB tape on top of the brackets. On top of that, I'll add a few layers of waterproof RV tape. This stuff is heavy duty and very strong. With this many layers and a massive surface area, I think this will be a great way to mount the panels without drilling through the roof. So here's a look at the solar panels installed. And I've been driving around for over a year now with this adhesive mounting system that I came up with. I've gotten the van up to 85 miles an hour with it. I've put 25,000 miles on the fan and I've had zero issues with it. Zero issues. Nothing's peeling off. Uh, I've never had any close calls, any, anything like that. So this system works. I'm not going to say I recommend everybody go out and do this adhesive solar mounting system, but it does work. So take that for what it's worth, I guess.